Okay, looks like we are live. I'm going to have the first lady make sure that she can hear me and that everybody can uh, hear me out there. Uh, welcome, everybody. Today is December 27th, uh, the last Monday, uh, not only in uh, December, but the last Monday of 2021. I do want to thank everybody for uh, granting Victoria and I uh, the break that we so badly needed, you know, having the first lady help me out with the sermons and the teachings and everything I have to do. Uh, it, uh, I'm just thankful we had a break. I really am. So I thank all of you for being patient with us. We are back and I can't wait to get started with this uh, teaching that we're going to do. Uh, let me see who we have on our screen right now. And there's our first lady right there already wishing everybody hello. So hello, first lady. Um, <clears throat> I'm all, we, I'm good. Okay, thank you, first lady. Okay, good. Every time I look at that picture, it reminds me of when I first I first met her. I'm telling you, but uh, I won't go into those details now. Uh, let me go ahead and hide that and come back over here. So again, uh, thank you for being here. The teaching we're going to uh, do today, I'm, I'm not going to keep you long. Today is not really going to be a teaching uh, per se, but it is going to be an introduction to a teaching that I really feel the Lord having me to do. And I'll get more into that later um, because there are some things that I've shared with First Lady that are that's going on uh, in the world today. And it affects the body of Christ. It affects the uh, the, the church. And I don't want any of you to be fooled by what is uh, what is ahead and what the devil has planned. All right, there's my mother-in-law. Hey, there we go. Hey, mother-in-law. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen and we can get to it. Again, uh, we're going to do a more in-depth uh, teaching starting next week. But let me introduce to you what I'm talking about uh, for today. So let me share my screen. I don't have any uh, audio today. It's all video. <clears throat> okay. So what I'm getting at today is, is our Jesus the true Christ? Uh, when you look at the the name Christ, uh, it, it means the anointed one. So we have a there's a there's a battle going on. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to it, but there is a battle going on right now in the world. It's not something new. It is something old, but it's really gaining steam. And so, what I want to do, and in case you're wondering where am I going with this teaching, why am I doing this teaching? Because uh, it's gonna be over a few weeks. I don't want any of you to be caught unaware of this movement that is going on. I've been really harping on my on my social media to make sure you know God for yourself. Make sure you have your own personal relationship with Jesus because uh, you can talk to First Lady. There are some things that are going on in this world that if you really don't know who Jesus is, if you are really not anchored and rooted and grounded in the word of God, <clears throat> then there are people here who are going to try to fool you into thinking that they are correct because they can quote scripture just like the devil can, but they're taking it out of context and they have no wisdom, no holiness, and no truth behind it. Yes, they do have facts, but they don't have truth. They don't have the spirit of God with them. And that is how you can defeat them by what you know and what you believe. So, Again, I can't stress it enough. You have to know Jesus for yourself. You cannot rely on the Jesus that my mother prayed to. And this is the church that my family has been going to. And I don't really understand the Bible that much. And I haven't really, I don't really pray, but I'm sure I'm going to heaven because I know my mother's up there praying for me. I know my daddy is up there talking to God on my behalf. And so I'm, I'm good. I know I'm going to heaven. Have you ever prayed to Jesus? No, I don't have to. I know my, my family. That's not good enough. You are the perfect one that this teaching is for. You have to know Jesus for yourself. So what I'm getting at is <clears throat> there is an old movement that is going on right now. And it's being done to prey upon African-American heritage, to pull that heritage against the Jesus in the Bible. 
Now I'm sharing my screen and you can see these images that man has created. And I'm going to go on record. I know you've probably heard me say it before, but none of these are remotely close to how Jesus looked. But because of an old painting that Michelangelo painted, many African-American, many black people, and I know that I have a great amount of black people. I, I have all people, all type of creeds and, and nationalities. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for who follow us on, on social media here. But I'm, right now I'm speaking to the African-Americans, the black people who, who listen to our teachings. There is a movement that is trying to really cause confusion and, and tear away the very fabric of Christianity because <laughs> there are people who actually believe that they are not going to worship Jesus because of the blonde hair and the blue eyed Jesus and they're going to worship something else someone else and that's why they're not going to pick up this bible and read it and follow it because that is not the true king that i don't know who this is and it's like wait a minute you know you have to stop and think and i i have had minor discussions with a few of these people and it's just amazing that they are willing to walk away from the jesus that is in our bible because of a painting that somebody painted hundreds of years ago. Are you kidding me? I don't care how man, mankind, woman, I don't care who tries to paint Jesus, they all are going to get it wrong. This is one reason why the Lord said, don't have any painted graven images of what you think heaven looks like. Nothing that has to do with heaven. And the Lord is in heaven. He knew man would get it wrong. And so I've been sharing some things with, with First Lady that there are people who are claiming to be Jesus. There are people who are claiming to be the Holy Ghost. There are people who are claiming to be God. And that is one reason I'm doing this teaching it's because I'm not going to give them any airtime during this Bible study that we have. I'm not going to mention their names. Uh, if you want to look for them, you, you, you can. You want to, you know, privately contact me. I can, you know, inform you of, of who these false prophets are. And that's what they are. They are false prophets. Anybody coming out and changing their name. Number one, they're changing their name to make themselves to be God, and then they're claiming to be the very spirit of God. One of them died already of cancer. You know, now I'm not um, mocking that he died, but if you're going to claim that you are the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, then why did you die of cancer? You see, that makes no sense to me at all. And, and Jesus said that you would have these false Christ popping up, and this is where we are now. And again, I want to do this teaching, not just tonight, but, you know, I'm introducing it to you, but the, the series, because you have to know that the Jesus that we pray to, that is in the Bible, New Living Translation, King James, I don't care, that Jesus is the one that we are praying to, the one that we serve, the one who died for us. And I'm going to show you through Genesis, through Revelation, how the prophets foretold about this Jesus and how this Jesus in the Bible is the Son of God. This way, in case you have any type of questions, any type of confrontation, with anyone um, coming in your, your presence trying to disprove Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, you can at least combat and say, no, by faith, I know who Jesus is, was, and will always be. That's part of the purpose of this teaching. So again, all of these depictions of Jesus are all inaccurate. He did not have blonde hair. He did not have blue eyes. And I'm going to go on record and say, it doesn't matter what Jesus looked like in the flesh. The devil likes to operate in fleshly matters. What did he look like? You know, I've gotten into before the, the, the hair being like wool. And I know people have misunderstood that verse and, you know, the, the Bible was talking about wool because we it was it was um, making a connotation that he was the lamb, the sacrifice. 
and how his feet were, were burned like polished brass, where Jesus was our sacrifice, he was able to walk the fire that we are not going to have to get burned. You know, there are different things that the Bible wasn't trying to show you that Jesus was a black man. The Bible was showing you that Jesus was God in the flesh. That's all we have to really, really worry about. So let me just go ahead and continue. So the images I'm showing you here, the devil is using the timing of what is going on right now, not just in our country. I've got photos and these photos are from our country, but there are there's social unrest all over the world. There is a huge black and white population issue all over the world. And people can say, you know, it's like nothing we've ever had before. Well, we've had we've had it before. We've had it since this <laughs> has all begun. I mean, I it's been longer before 1619. But I will let you know that uh, it's always going to be that way until Christ uh, brings his kingdom here on the planet. But what I'm getting at here is the fact that the devil is using the timing of social unrest to create all of this hatred and confusion. Now, this is where different nationalities come in. You know, it's not just black people. It is also there are there are many white people, there are many Asians, there's many Latin people who are starting to hate a certain nationality and are starting to gleam towards the thought that everything has to be black. And that is not what I'm I'm getting at here. Now the pictures, and we're all adults here. If you have some children, this I'm not gonna say anything that, that's inappropriate, but we're all adults. If you're looking at these photos, yes, the clan was made up of white men. That is a that's a historical fact. Okay, the, the the Civil War, yes, was fought over keeping slavery legal in America. Yes, that is true. Yes, George Floyd was a black man who died because he had a man's knee on his neck and he that man that that cop did not value his life. Yes, that actually happened. None of this has anything to do with your walk with Christ. None of this has anything to do with the Jesus I'm talking about in the Bible. And if you really are unsure of what I'm talking about, I really urge you to just do a little. And, you know, maybe and, and Lord, I, I, I take that back. I there may be some of you. It's not even important that you go searching for these. Um, I don't want to use the wrong word for these uninformed people who are claiming to be God in the flesh, who are claiming to be the Holy Ghost, who are trying to make an appeal to black men, to black women, to say, come away from this white Jesus and come over here. You know, it, it's just, it's amazing to me that this movement is really taking up steam, is really uh, picking up momentum because of the social unrest that is going on in this country and all over the world. But yes, there is a lot of social unrest and the devil's timing. He's, he's not, he's not crazy. He's not stupid. He's an opportunist and he's tireless. And the devil is going to use anybody he can to try to push his agenda. But you have to know that, you know, that Jesus is the King of Kings and that he, he lives. If you've been born again, he lives within you. He's not walking around the streets right now. Um, uh, with, with, with eyeglasses on, okay? He doesn't have to call an Uber to get from point A to point B. He's not in a limousine right now. He's not conducting a white party somewhere in, in Beverly Hills or New York. He's not doing that, <laughs> okay? There, there are men claiming to be God who are doing that. Now, our Jesus that we pray to, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, the one spoken of in Isaiah 9, that is who I'm going to do this teaching for the next couple of weeks until we get done to show you this is our Christ. This is our anointed one. As it says in Isaiah chapter 9, and I'm at verse 1 through 7, Isaiah the prophet said, Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled. 
But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. There's a whole teaching in there, and I won't get to it now. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. Mm. They will be fuel for the fire. Here we go. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. What will he be called? And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. This Jesus that I pray to, this Jesus that you pray to, that is the child that was born and given unto us. It is his government that is going to rest on his shoulders. Jesus, the son of God, he is the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. He has come from his ancestor, David. And I'm glad that Isaiah put that in there because I'm going to show you later on that is where the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, that is how they missed Jesus when he walked among them. They didn't even bother to do a lineage to see, wait a minute. Okay, th this man claiming to be Jesus and, you know, he is claiming to be the son of God. Uh, he's got to come through David. Well, who is his dad? Because he's saying he's the son of God, but how did he get here? Well, he was born uh, from Mary, but but you know uh, Joseph is uh, his father. Joseph married uh, his his mother Mary. Well, who was Joseph's father? They would have followed if they had a care to believe. They could follow Joseph's lineage all the way up to King David. There is nothing that went on with Jesus that was not. 100% pure and perfect. Jesus is the one spoken of by the prophets. There is only one Yahweh. There's only one Yeshua. There's only one spirit of God. God is a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And the good thing is they dwell within us. And that's, that's the amazing part. That's why that when I have been reading and, and, and looking at different interviews and looking at man trying to be God, I don't care if they are calling themselves Yahweh, you had to change your name to be that. If, if you wanted to, these people can't even explain how the universe has been constructed, you know, the one person before he died who called himself Yahweh. I wish I could have asked him, explain to me if you care to be Yahweh, how did the planet get formed? How did you create the world out of nothing and hang it on nothing and you are dying of cancer? How is that possible? And yeah, I would have been mocking him, but these are things that just it, and you can tell it angers me because it's not that I'm so much bothered by what they're doing. It's the fact that these people are fooling other people and they're leading people right to hell. And if you're not aware, and if you don't know the word for the word, and you don't know Jesus in the word, you could possibly get confused. And that's why I'm going to do all I can to make sure if you already know, teach someone else. Bring someone to Bible study. Share this video with someone. Take some notes that we're going to cover starting next week.
look what Paul wrote in the book of Acts. Now, this is something <laughs> that I really love, and I want to read this to you word for word. This is Acts chapter 17, verses 24 through 31. This is when Paul was describing God to people who didn't have any idea who he was. Listen at this. Paul said, he is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples. And human hands can't tend to his needs, for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he takes care of every need. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to go after God and feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. For in him we live and move and exist. Paul told them, your own poets have said we are his offspring. And because this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol created from gold or silver or stone. You know, God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, Paul said, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has planned a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed. And he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. I put a special note in here for me. This is the Christ that we worship, and his name is Jesus. And he is the one spoken of by the prophets of the Old Testament. He is the one that I'm going to be teaching on and going over in these next few weeks. You have to have faith in order to receive what Jesus has allowed grace to give us. Faith is about the heart, not about the mind. You see, you don't rely on your wisdom of God when it comes to faith. You rely on your utter dependence of Jesus. And that's where these people are going wrong, because if you listen to them, they're very dogmatic, very cruel and mean. And there's so much anger with their teachings and they feel like they have one up on you. There's a there's a mystery and only they know it. And you don't understand the true Bible and the true God. And and you 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 lost. You don't know what's going on out here in this world. And they hold it over your heads. And like Romans 122 said, in their search for wisdom, they became utter fools. They don't believe what is in the Bible. And when they do quote from Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, when they go through all of that, which just really makes me laugh when I hear them, they're, they're quoting it word for word, but they're getting the context wrong. And they don't, they're leaving Jesus out of it. And they think they have to do certain things in order to go to heaven. And God said, yeah, you do. Accept Jesus, my son, as your Lord and Savior, and you're going to heaven. But that's not good enough for them. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.30, he said, God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, and I had to put it in blue, God made Jesus to be wisdom itself. That lets you know. I'll finish the verse. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy and freed us from sin. And if you remember nothing else, be it from tonight or the teachings we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks, if anybody is preaching a gospel or doing a Bible study or doing a teaching, passing out a pamphlet, if they are doing anything in your presence or you hear about it and they have denied Jesus, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, write it down, they don't have wisdom. They're not wise. If it's without Jesus, they're not wise. If it's without Jesus, they're not righteous. If it's without Jesus, it's not pure. If it is without Jesus, it is not holy. And if it is without Jesus, it is not free from sin. It has sin just dripping all from it. 
And that verse you can keep and you can use that whenever you are confronted or if ever you're confused about something and you want to go, I don't know any verses in the Bible because there are a lot of new Christians who don't understand the Bible that come to our teachings. And here are the verse you need to have memorized. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 30. And even if you don't really know it word for word, just know God made Jesus to be wisdom itself. So without Jesus in the picture or the conversation or the pamphlet or whatever they're, they're, they're peddling or pushing, if Jesus is not in it, it's foolishness, it's unpure, it's unholy, and it's got sin written all over it. That's what I want you to get from these teachings. Now, for the ones who you may be new here, somebody may have brought you to this teaching, or you may have just clicked on this by mistake. Let me let you know it was by no mistake that you clicked on this teaching. If what I have said to you has moved you in any way, and you're like, you know what, I've heard those same people, Tony, I've heard them, you know, preaching and peddling that same, you know, numbers and do it and all this Old Testament, you know, teaching that I didn't understand, but they didn't talk about Jesus. And what I want you to know, there are 66 books in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, every single book in this Bible is a picture of Jesus. The whole purpose of the Bible was to point the world towards Jesus. Let me let, me let you in on a secret, you who have never received Jesus before. Let me let you know something about Jesus, which is why I love him so much. You see, Jesus has already accepted you. Isn't it time you accept him? Can you do that? You see, you've got people out here that are tearing down things. People out here who are fighting and, and hitting people and robbing people and killing people. You've got people on airplanes that are getting in fights and you've got people in the streets getting in fights. You've got people killing, shooting, stabbing their own family members. You got people out here acting like they are the ones that got kicked out of heaven. Lucifer got kicked out of heaven, not you. I don't condone violence, but listen to me good. If there was, if there was anybody who I could give a nod to why they should be angry as hell on this planet is Lucifer and his angels because they got kicked out of heaven. What is your excuse? When you are looking at people acting so foolish and mean and violent, I have to look at them and shake my head. What is your excuse? You are not the one that got kicked out of heaven, are you? Why are you acting this way? Jesus already accepted you. It's time for you to accept him. If you're ready to do that, and God knows, I pray to God you are, so I can, I can hug you and, and love on you when we get in the clouds and see Jesus as he really is. If that is you, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I repent of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept the price you paid for my freedom your death on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead and I am forgiven of my sins. My name is written in the book of life and I am rapture ready. In Jesus name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and this was the first time, I wanna let you know you did no small thing I want you to also know that you have made your way. Your eternal life is now something that will be bigger than you've ever imagined. You are now part of a whole family, a heavenly family that is going to love on you, pray for you, pray with you, cry for you, cry with you. We're here for you. If you are not in anywhere near me or and, and you don't know of a good church, Hang out with us every Monday. 
But there's a lot of good churches out there. But if you feel like you want to keep coming back, you know, and you you can put up with my voice for a half hour every Monday, then God bless you. Come on. We'd love to have you. But the rest of you, if you're still here, I just want you to know. Let me just go ahead and stop sharing my screen here. The rest of you, I just want you to know, I, I do get passionate about this. And it, it is only because what the Lord has done for me, what Jesus has done for me, Jesus saved my life. He kept me from killing myself. He kept me from hell. And he kept me from hurting other people. And it is my job. And I have told him many times since he saved me, I'm going to do all I can to let the world know about him. Because if he can really reach down and save a nut like me, he can he can save anybody. And once you meet him, once you talk to him, and once he holds you in his arms and rocks you and tells you, it's okay. I got you. I got you. You'll never go back. You'll never want to do anything else. So that's it for today, everybody. Uh, God bless you. Let me see who we got on here. Hey, we got Sister Willa. God bless you, Sister Willa. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. And we want to say a prayer for the Bryant family. So we just want to make sure we lift them up in prayer. So, Father, we thank you that you always hear us when we pray, Lord. Father, there is a need in the Bryant family. And, Lord, all of us here together, and we are connected by your word, by your blood, by your spirit, Jesus. We come together in agreement, and we ask you to work out that situation, to make every crooked place straight, to restore the health, and to restore the finances, restore the love, and most of all, Lord, restore the peace in the Bryant family. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, do it not only because it is for your glory, but Lord, do it because we ask you. And we ask you in the name that's above every name. We ask you in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We love you, Lord. We bless you. And most of all, we believe you and we trust you. In your name, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, mother-in-law, for that. We appreciate that one. And uh, don't let that be the last time. If you guys have any prayer requests that you want to submit, you know, you don't have to tell us what it is. If you want to bring it uh, before the church, we'll definitely pray either before, during or after. It don't matter. This is the Lord's time and we will be uh, we, we will be submissive to, to the Lord. So thank you, Jesus. And the first lady gave me a, a note. First lady, I I can't uh, I I. I Put my hand, first lady. What is it saying? Because I I can't I can't read it. So I just need you to come back in here, sweetheart. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I messed it up. Oh, okay, okay. And the name? Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. All right. Yeah, I. Sometimes my hand sweats and I can't read this right here. So, yeah, we got to um, say a prayer for Marzell and Cheryl. So we're going to add them and then we'll we'll, we'll let you guys go. Uh, Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus for Marzell and for Cheryl. Lord, there's so much that you have to do in us and with us, to us and for us, Lord. Death is not our friend and death is not the end. Lord, we don't go peaceful into that good night waiting to die. No, because it's not our friend. There is more for us to do, Lord. Just like Paul said, Lord, we would love to be with you. We would love to get out of here and just give these old tired bodies a rest and lay down our mortality and pick up our immortality. But Father, where would the people that don't know you, where would they be? Where would the testimonies come from? Where would the, would, would the miracles come from, Lord Jesus, if we're all gone? So, Father, I ask you, Lord, to just rest your spirit upon Marzell and upon Cheryl. God, ask, we ask you in Jesus' name to do this, Lord. We come before you, and we know you're able, and we know that you're willing. You are our Redeemer and our Savior. You are our Helper, Lord Jesus. You are our shield and our tower.
You have the wings that we are going to always run and hide under when it seems like all oh, hell is breaking loose, Lord. And, and the doctors have just shaken their heads and told us, well, that's it. You are the one that we run to, Jesus. For so, Father, we stand in the in the line of prayer right now. We make intercession for Marzell and for Cheryl. We ask you to restore, restore what the body cannot do on its own, Lord. Speak to every fiber of their bodies, every cell, every red blood, every white blood, every muscle tissue, every neurological uh, matter that's in the bodies, Lord, in the name of Jesus, restore strength. Restore peace, restore joy, restore wisdom. Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you, Jesus. No one can help us but you. Jesus, we thank you. And Lord, allow us to live strong enough, not just long enough, but Lord, all of us that are listening to this prayer, Lord, I pray that you would allow us to live strong enough to defend your honor, to defend your name, Jesus. You've done everything you needed to do, Lord, for us. And now it's our turn. Speak through us, Lord. Work through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, everybody. God bless you. I'm going to go. That one kind of got to me. Hey, um, we'll see you guys next week. We love you guys. Keep me and First Lady in, in prayer. If you have any prayer requests, let us know. We'll be praying for them too. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.